I noticed in your career, as you got into the 50s and television came on, there were more and more television shows, but one of your later films, uh, To Hell and Back, you actually got to play Audie Murphy as a boy. I did. I played Audie Murphy as a boy. I was about uh, 16 or 17. Mm -hmm. uh, that was actually shot... Uh, Audie Murphy uh, grew up in Texas, right? Uh, and but it was shot in Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, some people from Los Angeles would confuse Bakersfield with Texas, but we won't go there. <laughs> uh, the, the, the landscape's pretty similar. Right? Yeah, yeah, the oil wells. Uh, you know, I, I played him as a boy, so we weren't in any scenes together. Right. But he was on the set several times. Mm -hmm. Lovely guy, mm -hmm. um, just as nice and sort of straightforward and low key. Mm -hmm. uh, as all the reports, you know. That's good. So, Excellent. Uh, that was uh, that was a great experience because I got to sh to shoot a rifle for the first time in my life. Oh yeah. And I had to do. Uh, I had to have life rifle or shooting lessons and all that. Right, right. Get approved. And that, that was one of the things about being a child actor that that was great fun is I took all kinds of lessons. Uh, right. With bow and arrow for flame in the arrow. Mm -hmm. uh, ballet for flame in the arrow. That I didn't <laughs> like so much. Yeah. Um, uh, horseback riding. We did a lot mm -hmm. of that and did a yeah. bunch of westerns and so on. Well, that so, was the day where the studios really, uh, whether you were a child actor, if you were just starting out, they really did take care of you. And if you, you needed to learn how to box in a boxing movie, they trained you in fencing and so on and so forth. And, uh, my old chum, Dick Erdman, who went to Warner Brothers at 18 out of Hollywood High, he said, I didn't go to college, I went to the University of Warner Brothers. <laughs> that's how he learned to hold a fork and, and do, a, you know, do pretty much everything. Well, they yeah. saw us, I guess, as investments, and, uh, right. and they, uh, they nurtured those investments right. some, with some quite mm -hmm. well. Uh, it, it sounds so positive. Is there any... Any negative? I mean, you didn't you didn't work with like a Michael Cortez who started screaming and yelling, or or you hear the horror stories of directors and children. Did you find that just not part of your experience at all? One one film, one film only uh, did I have that kind of experience, uh, and that was Saddle Tramp with Joel McRae and mm -hmm. Wanda Hendricks. Right. And Joel McRae was a great guy. Yeah, really that's easy what I've to heard. work with. Really easy to work with. Don't really remember Wanda Hendricks, but mm -hmm. she must have been great because I don't remember anything negative. <laughs> the director was horrendous. Mm -hmm. And he is the sort of guy who would sort of build competition amongst, there were four boys. Right. Orly Lindgren, Jimmy Hunt, I don't remember who the third was, and mm -hmm. myself. Uh, and we, of course, we were just in constant, you know, so he just would stir the pot and set you against each well, other. Well, because we weren't all that well behaved either. And then <laughs> it wasn't a it wasn't a steep hill for him. No, and there were four stand-ins who would come in and, and stand in while they set the lights and set mm -hmm. the shot up and so mm -hmm. on. So between the eight of us, we probably were a handful. Right. <laughs> but he just he was terrible. If he, if you didn't if you didn't catch a line just right, he said, "All right, Orly, you do that line," you know. Oh, and so he set up some pretty pretty awful kind of. Uh, yeah. Uh, sets of competition and yeah. interaction, uh, and that's that's about the only negative I remember. Generally, I wanted to play baseball and football and, and mm -hmm. just be in school like the rest of my friends. Right. And there were I went through some times when I was a little resentful and a little unhappy, but I couldn't do that. But I have to say, by the time I was maybe 25. I look back and said, "This was a great experience." I was. That's true. I was able to do that. things that I just never would have been able mm -hmm. to do otherwise. Go places, meet people, do things, mm -hmm. and I still use a lot of what I learned uh, and a lot of what I became comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I still use almost every day as I teach and mm -hmm. practice architecture. I, in other words, when you say what you learn and everything is, is it a way of dealing with people or a way of presenting yourself or a way of speaking? Uh, how, uh, how yeah, yeah, being able to present an idea, present right. uh, uh, a concept uh, mm -hmm. and oneself is, a, sure. is able to do that. And sure. so it, uh, um, I'm a little more comfortable sitting up here like this uh, <laughs> than many of my colleagues are. Right. And, uh, uh, and again, teaching is... A lot about just getting up and getting an idea across yes, quickly, absolutely. well, and then getting mm -hmm. off without yeah. getting in trouble. <laughs> did, did, now, you, you took your career in a different direction around like 1959, 1960. Was part of it that the, 
the arc went up and then it started going down. I know uh, Billy Gray said, you know, he got to a certain point where everything he showed up for, he was getting the part, getting the part, getting the part. And then he got Father Knows Best, which was a hit show that was on so many years. And he said, I thought the rest of my life was going to be all I had to do was show up and I get hired. And, and that was not the case. Did, did Was it the arc or was it the passion for architecture or um, it was both both it yeah. was really both I mean I, 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 I could see living in Hollywood or living in Los Angeles um, uh, that you know 98% of the people in the business were not living a glamorous life <laughs> no. um, in fact barely eking out a living and it was a pretty tough tough thing to do but I also always wanted to build and again, it was about environment. We lived in the San Fernando Valley. We moved about three times. Mm -hmm. And every time we'd move, we'd move into a new neighborhood where they were building new houses. Right. And I got this sense of, I, I just want to build. I want to build houses. I want the smell of, uh, of wood and the smell of, of gypsum and all the construction noises and everything. I just had to build. You're, you found your passion. Yeah, I did. I was probably 10, 11 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, there were times when I kind of moved away from that a bit, lost sure. a little bit sight of that, mm -hmm. but it always came back, it always came back. Mm -hmm. So wanting to pursue an architecture career on one side, going mm -hmm. to college, uh, and then the parts, yeah, the parts dried up. I wasn't yeah. a cute kid anymore. I, I, you, know, you were I, a teenager. Yeah, I was a teenager, and, yeah. and uh, um, uh, I didn't want to pursue serious acting. Mm -hmm. So I think because I wasn't as motivated as I'd been, Right. Uh, and I think the system changed too. Yeah, so it did. there was an arc. I started with some small parts. I was very, very fortunate to move to some, some very good roles. Right. Uh, and then it, it tailed off. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm glad I did Tehal and Beck. That was the last role I did. But right. it was a very small role, actually. It was yeah. Three minutes on, on camera. Right. Uh, you know, it was Audie Murphy as a boy. So, mm -hmm. um, and then I did a couple other things for Disney and so on. But yeah. I, it, uh, yeah, it, it, it was both. The roles dried up, mm -hmm. the passion was taking over, mm -hmm. uh, and I was eager to get to the East Coast and just get away from, from right. California for a while. Right. Your, your other career, and I do want to touch on that briefly before we wrap up, is, is really extraordinary. I mean, I'm not an architect, but when I read, you know, USC and Princeton, um, Give us a, a quick overview of what your career as an architect, uh, the career path you followed, and what it has meant to you as far as both personally and professionally. Um, well, I, uh, I started uh, architecture school here in, uh, in, in Los Angeles at USC and took a little summer trip uh, between my first and second year uh, and happened to stop off at a school in, in Boston and said that I'd like to maybe transfer there someday. Mm -hmm. And uh, they said, well, it just so happens we got a spot open, mm -hmm. but you gotta get your transcript here and a portfolio and so on. Mm -hmm. You know, what do your grades look like? And I told them. And they said, well, we, we, we might have a spot, but get all that material there. Well, four weeks later, I was at MIT uh, in second year architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, and I never left the West Coast, East Coast. Mm -hmm. I mean, I went home maybe five, six, seven times in over the next five, mm -hmm. six years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then decided uh, that that was such a great experience and I was so eager to be there and so happy to be there that I wanted to continue to teach. So mm -hmm. I went to graduate school mm -hmm. uh, and was fortunate enough to get a teaching job. And So I pursued uh, teaching architecture for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and I got into some other specialties. And uh, But then I started to practice about 15, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. rather than doing consulting. Sure. Uh, so I've done residences and mm -hmm. um, trying to finish up two projects. Again, the, there's an arc. Everything's got its arc, right? Right. Exactly. And I, I'm now trying to phase out of the practice and do just mm -hmm. uh, just teaching and mm -hmm. end up that way. Well, you know what I think is interesting is that you indulge your passion for architecture, but you also went into teaching, and having been a teacher myself at one point, uh, part of teaching is acting Absolutely. because you've got to put on a show and you've got to get people engaged and listening and you have to, as you said, sell an idea. So I think you, you did those lessons you learned in front of that train with, with Dan Durier, I think might have held you well instead. And, and I do have to say, Gordon, I, 
Uh, Gordon lives in Poughkeepsie, and he's come out here with his family uh, just to be with us tonight, and I really, really appreciate you coming. And it's a fantastic performance. Please put it together for Mr. Gordon Bieber. Thank you so much.